Hello, Michael here from Small Robot Studio with another Render Man tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at how to render OpenVDB Fire. Um, I had a question on how to do this a little while ago and I just remembered that I know how to do that. So the first thing we're going to do is create a polyplane just so we've got something for the fire to sit on top of. Then we're going to ensure that Render Man is activated and we are going to create a OpenVDB visualizer. You do that by right clicking on this button and clicking the OpenVDB visualize. Then we need to load in a VDB. So I've already got one here. I'm going to use the fire example and I'll just position that above the plane and increase the scale of that plane also. When you import an OpenVDB, Render Man will automatically create a Pixar volume for it. So we'll open that in the Hypershade editor and we'll have a look at what it renders like just out of the box. So it doesn't look terrible, but as you can see, it is not very much like fire at the moment. It only really consists of a smoky sort of volume. So what we'll do is first we need to create a light in the scene. This is actually very important. So if you're doing this, make sure you have a light in the scene. Otherwise your render is not going to look very realistic because it's not actually going to use GI. Now, if you're planning on using this as your light emitter, um, just be aware that it will actually create quite a lot of noise. So it is actually good just to use a light in place of this and just hide the light and then use that as your light emitter. I'll sort of show you how I'd set that up toward the end. So we'll just clean that and remap that. And this is our fire. And what we need to do, we've already set our density float to Pixar Primvar, which is good. Um, but we need to get the color of the, uh, of the fire in. So to do that, we're going to type in uh, Pixar Primvar and add the Pixar Primvar node. And we're going to set this to temperature. And I know to do that because if you have a look at your OpenVDB, you'll see the uh, primitive variables that are available. You have density and you have temperature. Now you'll also note that the type of those is a float. So there's no actual RGB value there. So if we plug the RGB into the emit color, for example, and set this to color, run the render, we still don't get any color. So we need to be able to get some color data out of our float and the result F is all we've got to work with. So we'll switch this back to float. And what we're going to do is add in a ramp, a Pixar ramp, and we're going to run the result F into the spline map. And then we'll run the result RGB into the emit color. And then we will set up a couple of colors here. So pretty basic. We're just going to set up a red and orange and a yellow. And then the very end is going to be white and this end is going to be gray for the smoke. So if we run that now, you'll see you're starting to get a little bit more realistic um, result. Now you can see that the end there is it's quite blown out with the um, white. So we actually need a clamp that a little I would say. So we can use a PXR clamp. Um, however that's only an RGB input so what we'll do is we'll run the RGB from the float into the clamp and then run the clamp out into a Pixar to float. Run that RGB into the input and the F output into the spline map. So now what we can do is just clamp the output to get more of that yellow color if you wish. To help with this we can actually assign this to the uh, diffuse color as well and it does tend to give a slightly better result and then we can just move our colors around on the ramp. Okay and sort of just messing around with it you get something like that. It's not super realistic but um, I'm not going to mess around with it too much here. Now the last thing we can set up here is the light. So what I'm going to do is set this to light source and rerun the render. So you can see that makes a bit of a difference to the way it looks. It looks starts to look a little bit more realistic because it burns the color out a little bit more. However, you can see how much noise this introduces. Even if I activate denoising, it, it's having a, a bit of trouble sort of sorting that out. So you may want to use that if you've got the time to do the render, then it might look a little bit better. We could also, also use a 
sphere light, for example. And we can just set this to a yellow. Run the IPR and disable the light source. And then you can set it sort of to an orangey red color. And bring it down a little bit. And then we just need to light link it away from that VDB. With our light centric light linking. So we're just going to deselect the pixel volume shading group. And then you may want to re enable your other light just to illuminate the VDB a little bit better. And then it's just a matter of balancing out your light intensity uh, of your sphere light. So that you can see the, the render noise is a lot lower if you compare it to that uh, just also because it emits a lot more light as well so you, i mean possibly we'll have a look at what happens if we enable light source with the other light yeah still still a very very noisy render so i'd probably just use something like that to get your your light source um, light link it away from your vdb and then use another light to illuminate your VDB just so it looks a little bit more realistic. Obviously this isn't super well um, vis dev'd at the moment um, but this will give you just an idea of how to set up your colors and stuff and obviously you can go through and change your colors to anything you want so you can make it purple it doesn't really matter it will all you know it'll all function the same. Um, and for patrons this week I'll do you up a nice animated VDB of a fire um, so you can stick that in and, um, and it'll work the, a very similar way, but it'll just give you something else that you can stick in your assets um, directory. That's it for this tutorial. If you found it useful, make sure you leave a like so other people can find it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe as we're bringing out CG and illustration tutorials every week, just like this one. Become a patron and access tutorial assets, bonus content, a private discord, and more by clicking the link below.